Right? Hello everybody! Welcome back to Ninja Mafia Entertainment. This this week is going to be pretty awesome. With me today is Trudy, making her epic return to the channel. And Sean from Buy Rent Borrow, the, the regular. You're, you're no longer a guest, you're a regular. Wow, we. <laughs> I'm forget, very tired right now, I'm sorry. Forget the four way crossover. This is the crossover event of the season. Damn, and here I had it scheduled on my phone four way with Jared. Damn it. Oh, I was wow. talking about. I didn't have to change that. Uh, I was talking about the four way comic book show coming. Oh, so oh, that's. Oh. Okay, so that, that the four way is still on normal. Okay, that's good. That's good. Oh, well, we, anyway. we, we might want to change that. That. That's kind of... Uh... Yeah, Look, I, yeah, yeah. I heard the dark, seedy, underside comic conventions. I know what goes on. <laughs> All right. Today we are here. We're doing a full recap review of Luke Cage. Yes, the Netflix original series. Um, Overthoughts then. Jared. I liked it. Just in general. I, oh, yeah. I think it was... I liked it better than Jessica Jones, and I like oh, it... Yeah. Way better than Jessica Jones. I it think was I, great. I think I like it as much as I like Daredevil. If not a little bit more, I, I, I will, really like. I will it. agree that I like it more than season two of Daredevil, but I still think season one Daredevil has some of the best all over writing yeah. and direction for the show. See, I'm kind of, I'm kind of the flip flop of you. I liked it better than season one of Daredevil. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Season one of Daredevil. I don't know if it's if it's just something I really really latched onto with how it how it was made, how it was produced, and how it was presented, but it just seemed to me that that first season flowed so well yeah, and really looked so good and told its own conceptualized story of how Daredevil, how Daredevil came to be, who he is, and explained so much more than any other interpretation we've had for Scream, which I think has only been Daredevil, the movie with Ben Affleck, now that I think about it? No, there was a... An Incredible Hulk movie with a minute. Was it? Okay. Yeah, like back in the 80s. Okay, then. Yeah. yeah, it's obviously better than that. Yeah. <laughs> but but we're not here about Daredevil, we're here about Luke Cage. Right, we're here about Luke Cage, and I liked Luke Cage a whole lot. Like, basically the entire way through, there's like two or three points that kind of stuck. I have a few right. nitpicks, but that's it. Right, mine, mine are just a couple of... Mine's like one nitpick and one major contention for it all. But anyway, uh, let's start it with you then, since it's your channel. Man, I just, everything in general, like episode 1 through 13, just, it's one of those shows that kind of like keeps you just on the edge. Mm. And I'm glad it really went into his backstory subtly. Like it didn't just go, oh, well, here's his backstory. Yeah, now. it wasn't It wasn't a one episode exposition dump of backstory. It didn't it was, just show it yeah, out here and here, and then finally you get the payoff around, what was it, midway through, a little after? Yeah, and it explains who he is, what he is, why he's doing this, how right. he got his powers. And I do like that we met this character before in Jessica Jones, and now we are just kind of picking up where that left off. Right. And, and I mean, there's even hints of the other shows in Luke Cage. It, no, it has. Correct a, me if I'm wrong. Sorry. Oh, okay. uh, correct me if I'm wrong. This takes place after Jessica Jones. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. I uh, love the fact that it doesn't shove all the backstory down your throat in one sitting, too. Yes, very much. That was what we were talking about. How it uh, parcels it out between the show, and by the time you've got everything you need, you can collectively go, "Okay, now I've got it," and it does it in a very uh, approachable format. Yeah. So that worked really well. Also, just the little subtle hints of the other shows, like obviously Rosario Dawson is the biggest thing. Yeah, thank you. I was trying to remember her freaking name while I was watching the show, and I'm like, damn it, what is her name? I fucking know it. Yeah. Oh, God, yes. Rosario I think, Dawson. I, I was so glad to see her character back. I think they've definitely set up her as a plot device to bring all these guys together because she's been in all the shows and no probably, other actor has. Probably. I don't... I wasn't a huge fan of Jessica Jones. I'll even go so far as to say I didn't enjoy it enough so, to the point where I didn't finish the series. <laughs> yes, I didn't like it either. Okay. I liked it. Okay, I... What did you not like about it? Because I just is, couldn't stay engaged into the story. Right. Uh, it was, there was nothing there to hold me into it. Outside of David Tennant as the Purple Man, uh, 
I didn't find Jessica Jones that interesting. She's a snarky character that's she just kind of there. was overly snarky and in dour in an all-over bleh setting. And it's just like, you haven't given me something to contrast everything to. You've just given me this dark blob that sits here and is just kind of this snarky, ugly She's just mess. kind of dark and snarky for no reason. I don't have a reason to stay engaged. It gets into that, but it again happens, like we were saying, against what it did with uh, Daredevil and Luke Cage, where it basically exposition dumps the origin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you get like half of it in one episode, half of it in the other, and then just a little bitty strings of hints, and it's like, are we going to do anything with all this? And by the time the last episode rolled around, I was just like, you know what, I don't care. If she kills, <laughs> if she kills the purple man, great. If not, whatever. Yeah. I don't One way or the other. Yeah. Well, the best part of so if she doesn't show up in Luke Cage season two, I could care less. Yeah. The best part about like Luke Cage two is I think his villains were very well written. Yes. yes. Most of them. Yeah. Well, there's a few I have nitpicks about, but I kind of wish they would have saved the second half of the season's villain for like season two and had that be a much more. Uh, Ongoing style thing, See, I and feel had like this they... primarily focused around uh, Cottonmouth and his uh, cousin, yeah, and the political yeah. drama that they induce. That's exactly what I was. Well, say. I mean, it's right. A, they obviously set up the cousin and Shades to be the the bad guys next season, right? Which again is fine, but I and just the mayor it worked out. The mayor's the, the mayor. mayor's still out. Or the one who's trying to be the mayor. No, that's the, that's the cousin. Um, oh, she was a councilwoman. Councilwoman. That's who she was. Yeah, that's his cousin. Yeah, that was yeah. That, that's who we're yeah. that's who we're, we're talking about. Um, but no, uh, well, I guess we've kind of talked about this. We should probably give some kind of an overview for the series. <laughs> Luke Cage is the story about a pr prisoner who was experimented on, broke out of prison, presumed dead, and took the name Luke Cage. His real name is Carl Lucas, and he was he was a cop, and he was put in jail wrongfully. Yes. It wasn't him. He didn't do it. But Which they, we're going to get into that more when we discuss the end. Yeah. But he gets superpowers from a freak experiment, and... Well, the guy was, like, the guy was trying to kill him. Well, yeah, it's it. a freak experiment, because <laughs> it wasn't supposed to yeah. be like this. So, it happens, he, get, he becomes bulletproof, and has an accelerated healing, and busts the hell out of prison, takes on uh, a different name, and goes up to clean up the mean streets of Harlem. Well, I mean, originally, the, another thing about Luke Cage that I like so much is, at the beginning of this show, he was not a hero. And he didn't want to be a hero. No, he just wanted to be left he, alone. Like, he, he wanted, he worked under the table at very... Right crappy jobs like which let's face facts if you want to stay off the grid that's what you got to do yeah pretty much and like he just kind of kept he just, himself he just wanted to live very very low key which, and until he kind of just got pushed into right. the spotlight because so much was going on which kind of makes me wonder if he wanted to be so low key why did he own a bar in jessica jones i'm not <laughs> sure see that this jessica jones seems to be the one screwdriver in the wedges of everything that's keeping everything from interlocking perfectly. Well, was that his and bar or did he just work there? I'm pretty sure it was his bar. Well, he, I think he ended Because it. he was, like, throwing people out and shit in Jessica Jones. Uh, well, I mean, a dot bar is a dot bar. Like, you can't really draw that much attention. Like, it's a bar in New Maybe, York. Maybe, but even still, you have to have, like, a liquor license. You have to have and property I mean, ownership. Even for, like, a low part of New York, you still gotta have and a I mean, paper trail of some kind. Yeah. And even if you're low key successful, people are still going to know you own it. Right. And so that's kind of. <sighs> Jessica Jones screwing things up again here. <laughs> but no, I like how this started out. I just pretty much from the get go just said, you know what? I'm going to ignore Jessica Jones unless it comes up in the series. And it really didn't. It came and up one it time. It came up one time, and I think it cited the end when apparently she shot him in the head with yeah, the shotgun. Yeah, the shotgun, the knock him out. I guess. I don't know. Uh, like I say, I didn't watch the ending. So that I gleaned that and I was like, oh, I guess that's how Jessica Jones ended. What did you think of all the Avengers stuff we got in it, though? I like a lot of the mentioning of the Avengers. I like the fact that it's actually having an impact on the people in the New York City 
area yeah. and how it's affecting even like the lower lower areas. I love the, the bootlegger guy that he shows up in like three episodes. He's like, I got I got DVDs, I got Blu-rays of the incident. Tony Stark, the green guy, Thor, let's go. Yeah. No. That's what I like. All yeah. for you, baby. <laughs> it, it very much ca captured that uh, I keep saying the lower city, but I gotta I gotta have a better better nerd yeah, better name for it. But it, it captured that kind of uh, the heart of Harlem, the heart of Harlem, that atmosphere that permeates. Thank you. Yeah. That atmosphere that permeates around everything there, and I really, really liked this show. I did too. I enjoyed it. it, it every episode just kept me wanting more. Mm. Just wanted me to keep uh, watching. That was that was what I was talking about uh, with Daredevil, how it presented the story and how it laid out so well. I wanted to keep watching and wanted to know more. And yeah, me and my brother blew through like eight episodes in a row. I think, like, uh, with Luke Cage, um, I watched the first two, mm -hmm. but I had to go back and rewatch them because I missed a lot of stuff because a friend was talking during it. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I blew through the rest of the series in, like, two days. Yeah, it's, it's a really good series to try and, try and go through. If you want a good superhero, uh, yeah, Luke Cage is it. If, you do, if you're tired of, like, Captain America and the Avengers and stuff like that, definitely give Luke Cage a watch. What'd you think about, uh, they, they did it just for like 10 seconds, but the original costume. I liked it. I loved, <laughs> I loved how that came into play. I'm a big comic nerd and I love the origin stuff. He nerded it out. I was like, I oh, was, this is great. And then he's like, man, this looks ridiculous. I know, so he just started to take it all off. I was like, oh, come on guys, really? Yeah, it looks stupid, but did you have to call attention to it? I, it was the 70s, <laughs> it was a nod. Damn it. It was a know, nod to the fans. We know it looks dumb, okay? Just <laughs> they have Luke Cage with the tiara and the yellow shirt. Thankfully, he did say Sweet Christmas a lot. Yeah. I love that. Okay, this brings up a big point that I actually really like as a very small uh, differentiator between Hero and the villain. What did you think about Luke Cage not swearing? This was something that was established very early on. Yeah. And it is kept up throughout the series. I think he swears like twice and only uses the N-word once. Yeah, when the guy was about to when the guy was him. trying yeah, to stick him up, and he was like in front of a very historic black landmark, and even then I was like, you know what? Yeah, he he would be angry at this point. He would use that. He would throw that back in the guy's face as a point of contention. Yeah, and uh, I was really okay with it. And I honestly wish more movies were like that. It's a very small line, but it's something that says. The good guys, even if they're in a really bad place, are still the good guys. And Luke Cage was always that guy who stood up for what's right no matter what, even on the smallest level. Yeah. yeah. And I really, I just, it was something that really endeared me to him. And I don't know why. It's like, you know what? He doesn't have to be, he can be badass without having to drop 14 F bombs. Yeah, he, I he's not the generic all over the place. character that we get sometimes. And he's that's, so weird too. He's he's simultaneously super generic and super distinct. I yeah. just like the fact that because he's like a normal guy, but like it's showing that he's a normal working guy, but he's right. like out there saving people. That's one of the reasons I was kind of like Hellboy the way I did. He's he's a lot like that. If you like this, you might enjoy reading some of those. The but, the villains were written like that too, though. Like the, yeah, villains, the villains were, were the polar so, opposite. They were so foul and blue and just. Bad. But, and I they mean, made you hate them. Yeah, that, but it was a natural hate. It wasn't something that was like, I'm going to punch an orphan in the kidney. Well, <laughs> yeah. the episode, like, the episode, um, and full spoiler alert. Yeah, we're, we're we don't want to spoiler. This is a big one. Like, halfway through. When go watch the series either way. But if you want, if you don't want spoilers, stop this watching This is the now. point to stop watching. Go watch it. It's wonderful. Full scale recommendation. Yeah. You might have a couple of problems, but that's it. Okay, go when ahead. When Cottonmouth died, I felt so much sympathy for him because that whole episode, they explained who he was and why he was doing that. Right. He didn't want to be a gangster. That was the life he was forced into by his family. Well, then you have the problem that, yes, he was pushed in this direction, but it was his choice at a certain point to yeah. keep going down this road, and it even shows that. This was not something that he... 
had to keep he pursuing. He had to keep doing. There were several times where he could have gotten out. And he did. And so that's why I felt so little empathy for him when he died. And I was like, you know what? This is this is your comeuppance. This is what this is karma for you. I mean, I understand like he did have the chance to get out, but also like you have to his frame of mind is like, you know, this is what my family does. I'm doing this for my family. Right. Like I need to help my cousin win this seat on or keep the, her seat on the council. Right. Like but, everything like that. It was just he was so well written and not just him, but uh, his cousin was well written and shades who I was very surprised was. Oh was my totally, god! When I first yeah. saw him, I'm like, oh great, we're gonna get some generic ass bad guy who's just gonna be like super smooth, super cool. But in the end, I was like, man, this guy's actually kind of deep. I like him. Yeah, and he's he's, well, he's, the, he's the smooth, he's the smooth, collected and cool guy and that he you was look the at one, and go like, you know what? You're actually kind of dangerous. He was the one who put everything together. So right. He's not. He's the only one who knew Luke's backstory mm -hmm. and knew who Luke really was. Yeah, that was kind of where I thought it started going overboard a little bit with how much he could and should be in the story, but we'll get to that point. Well, he was just kind of a small figure in that prison, but he was still in the prison. Right. And he didn't even recognize him at first. It took him fighting right. to go, oh, well, that yeah, that's him. Yeah, now I, I recognize this six and a half foot tall behemoth of a man who beats people into the ground with his yeah. pinky. I was glad his character was was a good character though because no, he's written very I had well. He acted just play. seen this actor in two other things. Was it, what else is he in? Uh, he was Anarchy. in Sons of Anarchy. Okay, um, and he played one of the the sons, Juice. and uh, he played yeah his character's name was Juice, and he was in When the Bow Breaks, which is it's a movie me and Trudy saw the other day. I night. have been needing to go see this movie. Apparently, it is simultaneously wonder wonderful and awful. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, I am so on board for that movie now. It, Like, yeah. in that one, he was, uh, like, the, their, the surrogate's boyfriend. Like, the couple had a okay, surrogate. Okay. Like, he was a surrogate's boyfriend. Yeah, I, and he was I, trying and to he rip played, them off. I listened to somebody do, like, an overview of that but movie. But he so played a bad guy in that, too. Okay. Like, he okay. was... I'm kind of interested to see uh, what else this guy is in then. And I can have kind of a comparison because I now know, I've now seen him do something good. So if he's in something bad, I can see whether he's a good actor in a bad situation or whether it's just the writing being that freaking good that even somebody who can't act his way out of a wet paper sack becomes yeah. somebody great. He's a very, he, Marvel I mean. has a tendency to do that. I mean, yeah. even in Sons, though, and in When the Bow Breaks, he was really good. Okay. He made the movies really good. Jared didn't like When the Bow Breaks, but there were some points I didn't like, but <laughs> I, there were some I've points heard, that I did enjoy. I've heard it's, it's don't go in with high expectations and yeah. expect a bad movie. It's yeah. It's, really it's very bad. generic. Anyway. Back to Luke Cage, though. Yep. Um, no, I really liked him. I liked the way uh, Cornell Stokes, a.k.a. Cottonmouth, was handled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Man, I, I got attached to I like him. really quick. Oh, yeah, no, they, oh, made him, yeah. they made him so endearing. I was like, he's going to die. I know he is, but I'm going to be then so mad that, when he like, does. It, I think it's kind of cool. Like, his place was, like, neutral ground. Right. And that's where everybody was supposed to meet and have their meetings and... Like, even it pissed the gangsters off when this dude went in and shot the place up. Yes. And killed him. Because, yes. like, Hot Mouse was like, okay, well, I'll just rebuild his shop. He's going to be a little pissed, but he'll have to accept it. Right. And then he was like, um, Pops is dead. And Hot Mouse like, excuse me? <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you did what? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> off the building. Yeah. I hope your insurance is paid up because you're going to meet the roof real and quick. And like, when car. he told the guy, like the guy who told him where, where the dude was, he's like, you can collect your money down there, sir. Yeah. It was great. You, you can, you can go talk to him. I don't think he's going to talk much, but you can, you can try. <laughs> Uh, I love, and I knew Pops, I was like you, I knew Pops was going to die because every character that you fall in love with in, move, in movies or shows or anything, mm. they're going to die. The, the, it's going to happen. I got, I, I like Misty a lot too. She was well done. I, I was, her. I was really, again, I was really convinced she was going to be like the stereotypical hard-bitten streetwise cop, but it's like, no, she's actually a smart police detective. 
I was. She understands how to put the crime together, how to spell everything out, and yet at the same time, uh, she went very William Defoe with it. Like yeah, I did in Boondock Saints, where she was like, "Okay, yeah, this yeah. is what happened." I love that, dude. I love it when yeah. cops do that in movies. I kept hoping she'd lose her arm, though. I thought that was what was going to happen. Like they were going to, yeah. like they weren't going to be able to get to it in time, and she was going to have it accidentally amputated, or have it have to be amputated. And that's when like season two comes in. She's got like Stark Tech on her, yeah. on her arm. Uh, I really wanted that, but I mean, I can understand uh, why they didn't do it. Yeah, no, it it would have been probably jumping the shark a little too soon for that. But yeah, the the one thing I do want to know with all these series is how the hell has Shield not showed up yet? You have so many powered people running around New York, like, and they're not discreet. Everybody knows about Jessica Jones snapping the purple man's neck. Or, Apparently. Or the only one that can't even really be considered powered is Daredevil. And he has powers, but... Nobody really knows about them. They're, um, it's like, he's like a bat. Like, it's right. sound waves. Right. And he's more of a ninja. Like, he'd probably be the hardest one to find out of all. Jessica Jones is right there in the public, and so is Luke Cage. Right. Like, he was on TV. Hmm. And how would S.H.I.E.L.D. not show up and be like, okay, well, you need to sign these documents saying that you can only use your powers at this certain time, at this certain place, and you have to check in with us every six months, and... <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I don't know. I don't know why Shield is like the DMV mm. in your mind. Maybe. <laughs> did you not hear how Yo Yo talked to them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I think I think that Just is saying. Maybe that we'll get a hint of that on Shield. We might um, actually. We them might see like how the this DMV one. Or? This one. Uh, Some of them do. Well, them like interacting that. with uh, the Netflix series. Uh, Apparently, the Netflix series are all made through ABC Studios, so... Yeah, it's all we, tied to... Right, ABC, I, I didn't Disney know that they were still the same production house, but apparently we might get some kind of uh, influence from that. Yeah, um, um, ABC handles all the shows. We're actually getting another superhero show on cable. Oh, really? Uh, uh, Cloak and Dagger. Really? We're busting into the D-level? Yeah, they're going to be on Freeform. Wow, we, we couldn't get, like, Dazzler in there first? I mean, at least she was part of the X-Men, for Christ's sake. Yeah, but demons don't exist. Oh, shit, that's right. <laughs> but uh, I just want to see, I want to see a connection. That's, I mean, I do love it how they started connecting it, because uh, you had Nightmare Rosario Dawson show up right. uh, about the fourth episode, and she, she kind of starts tying everything together. She talks about Matt a lot. Uh, she talked about Jessica once or twice. And we also heard Jessica's friend, Trish Talk, uh, bit, like at the beginning of episode four or five where they were talking about Luke Cage. Hmm. That was the friend from okay. uh, Jessica Jones. Okay. So they're, they're all tied together. They hint mention the Avengers, especially the right. bullets in the gun that can hurt Luke Cage or Chitauri Metal. Yeah. That, I found that awesome. Yeah, the Jesus I bullets. really, really like that. I like that. the fact that it's hammer tech, too. Yeah. It has, it has yeah. that extra tie-in. Uh, like they talk about Justin Hammer. Everything. Yeah, and hopefully we'll get some kind of a pay, payback for that. Because yeah. I, I like Justin Hammer. I know he was a bad guy, but I like the actor. Sam yeah. Rockwell's such a cool, nice guy. The guy is a great <laughs> actor. He's, he is great. But, no, uh Honestly, the, I don't really have that many complaints about this series. Yeah, the bit where he's like, oh, that for a little stupid when he's yeah. in the gold, when he's in the yellow shirt for TR, and that, that, that was like, okay, whatever. You, you get one. I you wish, get one show. I, um, I wish we would have had more flashback. The only villain I wanted to know more about was Diamondback. Honestly, I thought there was enough there that you could kind of piece together. I wanted to, to see a couple scenes. Like, the only thing we really saw was the boxing thing with Diamondback. It would have been nice to see a little more of the dark side. But... Yeah, I wanted to see, like, Diamondback, like, how he set Luke up. Like, I wanted to see well, kind of, like, in... why Luke went to prison. I wanted to see that segment. Well, hopefully that's going to be in season two because uh, at the very end they find his folder. Yeah. Uh, underneath the piece of debris and Diamondback is in a prison or is in a hospital ward with the guy who made the Luke Cage experiment happen twice now. Yeah. Uh, 
That's so. That's another thing I did want to touch on. I'm so glad this is the first show to leave New York. Yeah. And they finally left New York, and well, they left Hell's Kitchen first of all, because this is in Harlem. Yeah, it's in like, Harlem. The Harlem. other two are in Hell's Kitchen. Yes. And this gives us an entirely separate place to work with, an entirely separate method of doing things. Exactly. Like I, I thought, just that many people in one area. There's no way they wouldn't run into each other like that. Right. No, I, I thought that was really good. Uh, I think they they did something I don't like, which is they introduced a concept and then almost immediately forgot about it. Which one? Um, Luke wanting to keep his uh, super strength secret after uh, the rocket hit. Yeah. And he, he leans into about... his landlady and he's like, yeah, just keep it a secret. And then in literally the very next scene, you see him chunking pieces of concrete that weigh at least a ton. That's like a fully formed doorway. Yeah, and then he yeah. punches through it. And punches through it. And, and, through and it. like the whole media is there. It yeah, is and like, it's just oh, like... So everybody's filming I, it. I guess we're just done with being a secret thing? Okay. So it was a secret for like five seconds? Yeah, and it's just like, well, that was, that was an entirely wasted piece of whatever. Yeah. Why'd you even tell her to keep it a secret? Yeah. And really, the only other thing I had a problem with was the overall ending, how I did everything not, got... I did not enjoy the ending. I didn't like it. The ending. It felt like a very sloppy tie-off. For the ending, for those of you who are wondering or have seen or are wondering our opinion, the ending, it ends with uh, Diamondback and Luke Cage getting into a, a punching match in which Luke Cage wears down Diamondback's... Uh, uh, nuclear batteries, essentially. Yeah. By getting punched repeatedly. Punch I bombs. did not like that suit. I like it's a it's definitely an homage to the comics. I, I liked it. I thought I didn't I like it. it. I thought we could do with like maybe a little bit more updated. Like yeah. I understand, and it, it it was great as an homage, but it's kind of like the seventies Luke Cage costume. It's like okay, I thought it did this. With the character. It's somebody who's innate, so innately stuck in the past, he cannot move forward in a sense. That's, and so for this character to have built something that would have been a relic of the past, but modernized, that works. And yeah. he, did, he did mention that when he was wearing it. He, he said something about it being a representation from the past when he was wearing it. I mean, I guess I missed that part. I was, so, I mean, yeah. I, thought, I thought that worked fine. I kind of wish, again, I wish we would have had more hints about Diamondback being there and being like an overarching villain where he appears and we get this beat down in season two and we can get a little more backstory with him personally and him having been a minor player in season, season one. Is season two going to happen before or after Defenders? I do not know. But I'm like feeling I said, like they'll probably bring him back though. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then, but I, th I wish that would have happened and then we could have had a little more time with Cottonmouth and his cousin and then with the political machinations because I thought that was much a much more stronger uh, fight for Luke Cage to go up against was because when you it's the Superman conundrum when you have somebody who's impervious to harm the only way you can hurt them is through personal means yeah and attacking their loved ones and such which they kind of do and I like that and I was like okay so all the torment is happening in a way he can't punch back and it kind of added to his dilemma of being somebody who won't kill somebody even though he has this immeasurable power. Yeah. And there, there's one thing it seems like they're setting up to that I I'm not I don't approve. Hmm. I think they're looking to set up a love triangle between Daredevil, Night Nurse, and Luke Cage. They've already kind of set it up because yeah. they were like like him and Night Nurse were like making out at the end. Yeah. I don't uh, that's I don't know. I mean I just I Night think Nurse, it's something that doesn't really need Daredevil to be didn't exactly part on good terms with anybody at the end of season two and he just kind of pushed everyone away so I don't think he would be overly well, ambitious about they could do him. that or they could just have Jessica like either way Luke Cage could have a love triangle it could but um, I, I would just, be okay I with it if it were it. Jessica Jones it would make a lot more sense from the uh, continuity standpoint but yeah I, well I think I that's think, what Jared's saying is because in the comics, apparently Luke Cage and marries Jessica Jones. Right. Yeah, and they have a kid. Um, I just, I don't want to see a love triangle because yeah, yeah, that's, I, a, that's I a very tired gag. I don't, I'm yeah. done with it too. 
Um, I, but yeah, I think I think Dimebeck would have been a much better, depending on how they handle season two. I think he would have been a much better contender for his own plot in season two, rather than just being half of season one. With season two, I'm I'm wondering if it's going to start like with him in jail or with him getting out of jail. I'm not sure. I think we might have like an episode that kind of bridges the gap as to what happens. Or they could have him get out of jail and Defenders, and then go to Netflix. If Defenders happens first, then we, might, season two. then we might get him getting out of jail. Well, you know he's going to work for his freedom, because in that scene where they're driving away and talking about the book, he's like, well, you'll... Mom. Uh, he's like, well, you'll have a lot of time to read this book now. And he's like, no, I have to get to work. Yeah, but he's not going to have to work for too freaking long because they have the evidence that's going to say he didn't do this. Exactly. All they have to do is turn that over to the police, which Misty Knight is more than uh, willing to Which makes no have. sense of why they put that's him in there. That's what I'm saying. Anyway. Why like, you is it that, This could have been a wrap-up oh, to where they you have him pushed away for a little bit. And then you have everything else, and then they're like, and then he walks through and is like, yeah, I recover. It's a good thing that the chess guy recovered that portfolio at the scene. At least some good came out of this. This and ending makes me so upset. Well, <laughs> there's just a I didn't lot of like ways them getting off scot free. Like the bad guys got away with it. Two of them. That's like, it. Right. That that was my biggest point about this. That I, my biggest point of contention. I don't have a problem with the bad guys winning. I just wish there would have been some more ramifications to them. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, I killed like the, having uh, I killed the star witness. I'm I just got off. Like, yeah, like I would have been more happy if much. she had been like politically devastated for something like that, having been arrested so many times publicly, yeah. that people are just like, you know what, we're not funding your campaign anymore, and she just loses it and goes completely over <laughs> to the crime side of things, and then she starts running uh, Cottonmouth's criminal empire from there. That would have at least been some kind of closure that, yeah, you didn't get what you were wanting. I love how devastated Missy was when it happened. No, I really like that they portrayed a lot of human emotion with her. And, yeah, I think... I think the devastation little, when Candace got killed. I think it got a little carried away at some points where it's like, okay, you've done this twice now. I think you would have learned the first time. I know you're... The phone and, thing was a little outlandish, though. Yeah, it was just like... Cause when I'm, a person, I'm not even a cop, and I know to do a, like at least a password protection like on when my your phone. phone. And when you lose your phone, you're going to know it immediately, especially if yeah, you're not phone. Well, then again, it was combat. Well, so yeah, I was about to say, there was a big stuff going but on. Also, I'll, I'll, I'll forgive that. But, but also, still, it was raining. Mine's right there. And here. Try and get in. Also, it was raining. In the same. Yeah, her that's, phone's that's fine. You can just do all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Why would it be the same one as yours? All right, that's three. Hand it back over. Nope. Yeah, four. Well, I mean, some people like do have the obvious passwords, but some not so much. Well, a but, cop would. Yeah, yeah like why would, would you not? Especially have somebody a, who's proven to be smart. And capable the entire way through until finally she slips up this way. Um, no, I just, it really kind of irked me that everything just lined up perfectly for the bad guys. And I'm like, yeah, that can happen in real life, and bad people have good things happen to them, and good people get the shaft. But I don't watch a show about a bulletproof man taking on drug dealers for reality. <laughs> yeah. So it was... The it was, biggest thing, I think, like, they, they've they tried way too hard to set up for Daredevil to come in. That's why they did it. Yeah. It's uh, very it obvious. Like they're, they're probably going to try and uh, merge them into, like, a basically a Daredevil Luke Cage, Jessica Jones power hour. But even well, though that's even... what the Defenders is going to be, because uh, they announced... Iron Fist is going to be in March. Okay. And then we have all, all that. Um, we're also getting... And then a purge Fist. show. Yeah. A what? There's going to be a show. You know the the purge series? Yeah. They're doing a show. Do show okay. I love that series. Uh, the second and third, I'll give it to you because it takes the concept and goes just absolutely over the wall with it. Which... By all means, that's what I want. The first, the way it kicks off, though, was just so boring and generic. It's just like, it's a home invasion movie. You did nothing with this concept. The, this 
wonderfully out there idea that all crime is legal for one night, and instead you want to focus on one group of idiots. Well, we're 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 getting really off. Topic. We're getting really off. Yeah. Topic. Sorry, uh, Michael Bay was the executive producer on that, and I immediately dropped all hope and expectation that a competent. You really hate Bay. I hate that man so goddamn much. Um, no, but uh, yeah, Luke Cage. I, Luke Cage was really really good. Um, what? And Let me ask you this: with the the setup for the defenders, I'm sorry for interrupting you, Trudy. Um, what what do you think? Like, do you think we'll just get the four, or do you think we're gonna get uh, the others that have been introduced? Like, do you think we're gonna get Electra, Misty Knight, uh, just uh, Hellcat? Do you think Punisher? Do you think we're gonna get any of those guys? The I know. Defenders. Like, I know Punisher's been hinted at. I don't know. He about, has been approved for his own series. He has been approved for his own series, which means we're probably going to at least get him in the Defenders, and that'll probably spin him off into his own series. Um, it makes sense that we would have a lot more people in them try and do like their own Avengers style thing, especially now after they've had three very well, two very successful series and one moderately successful series. Uh, one of which is going into at least its third season soon yeah and so it would make sense for them to i don't want to say go bigger is better but be more I'm inclined to try and do a what mass conglomeration sort of threat would would put them up against that's what i'm kind of interested in um i'm really really hoping it's like the scrolls or something well this is i thought you said hellcat was gonna be one Hellcat already. is jessica jones best friend that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Um, I don't... If you look at all the series, besides Purple Man, these, they were fighting mobsters and gangsters until, like, the ninjas showed up in right. season two. So, like, all two out of three of the villains have been just really, like, plain, like, corrupt people that you could get in real life. Right. And they're just doing something about it. Well, that's kind of what I'm... There may be something come along that I don't think they do something as grand of a scale as this. Well, hopefully we'll get some of the more mystical stuff with Iron Fist because his very obviously deals with... uh, They're introducing... Chinese and uh, Oriental mysticisms. They're introducing another character in Iron Fist, too, that uh, hangs out with him and, like, it's Misty Knight's best friend in the comic. I can't... Thing in her name, though. right? Well, there's seven immortals, yeah, of which Danny Rand is one. So we might get a glimpse into some of that, which I'd really, really like to see. But no, I have no idea. I'm kind of on board for it. And Did you notice the the Easter egg at the end of Luke Cage? Which one? Um, like uh, I think it's Rosario Dawson passes a pole, and like up on the pole is like a thing for like the type of martial arts he does like for lessons and stuff. yeah I, see, I did see that she yeah. looks at it, I was like, mm, like oh okay it's like well, that, that's a subtle little nod way to go it wasn't exactly that subtle yeah when the character interacts with it it's not subtle <laughs> it was small but okay I think we've tiptoed around what I think a lot of people are going to want us to talk about the political side of all this uh, yeah. Not not like her, the cousin's political side. I can't remember her name in the series. Um, but like the, uh, essentially the cops versus uh, black people debate, which I thought they downplayed wonderfully and basically left it the hell alone. I'm so glad, man. And it really made me glad because I'm like, oh, God damn it, you're going to get political about this. And they, they, tr- they, I think they tried hard. Not Some to. people tried, and it was mostly seen from the cousin trying to manipulate the media with the political frenzy, yeah, and trying to get the the Black Lives Matter involved in this. And it's like, oh, this isn't part of this, but you're using this. You're using something that's awful with everything, and you're trying to inject it into a scenario where. Doesn't like when the kid got dirt. me. Right. And it's like... Oh, I heard that was some people's problem with Luke Cage, too. Like, some people just straight said they didn't like it because they thought it was too black or aimed at more of an urban audience. I didn't think uh, that at all. Duh. 
I didn't. Well, I didn't. He's a black dude from Harlem. The, the hell you think the target audience is gonna be? Well, dude, it doesn't mean other people can't enjoy it. They I were, love the hell. They were saying engaged. that's why like other people couldn't enjoy it is because it was targeted for an urban audience, and I didn't think that. I think they were. Just, I love the show. I think they were just intimidated because that man was just so damn handsome. That's probably what it was. Sweet Christmas. I <laughs> I am secure enough in my manhood. That man was damn handsome. It, he's pretty, pretty big dude. Oh, pretty good. Yeah, just, just, just say it. He's handsome, man, handsome. No, that man is handsome. Just full stop. That good man, job. that man looks good. Dude, he he does. Great. He is. Like that being said, The I, Rock wanted to play that character. I'm glad he didn't. Yeah, me too. But they, like, they, I they definitely think they guy. found the perfect person. But mm. well, I say that. The only Luke other... Cage is very well spoken in this, which I like. Um, he know, he walks that line where he's smart and educated, but he's still let's face it, he's still straight enough. He can get along with anybody. Yeah. Um, but he never goes like Wesley Snipes and Blade level straight. <laughs> um, that being said, am I the only one who thought he sounded a little weird in some of his delivery of lines? Where he had to explain some stuff and there like was a few times where it's like there's just some weird inflections. You're just like, did or did you ADR that and it just sound weird or yeah, am I yeah, weird? I was kind of like, did I, it just I, hit my ear wrong? Yeah, or? that was me. I was like, I don't want to say he's doing this phonetically because English is very obviously his first language, but there are just some scenes where he where says he's like. Where he's explaining some stuff, and it's like when he has to pontificate. And when he has to speak for a long period of time. Right. And, which I can completely understand. Well, sometimes, like, something happens with the mic and stuff like that, so that could have been... I know, maybe, but in but editing with happen, movies like that... Yeah, it seemed to happen a lot in this. Once it or wasn't, twice, I can just be like, okay, whatever, something weird happened there, and it's just no oversight. It was a lot. But this was a lot. And again, not to take away from this man, he did a fantastic job, and everybody in this show did a fantastic job. This is, but there were just yeah. some parts where I was like, uh, "That's where you had to like cock your head and like." Yeah, I I don't know any other way to say it, but it sounded, it sounds off, and not really not, forced, but like not, yeah, not forced, not wrong, just ever so slightly wrong. Like, it hits your ear a different way than it should. Right. And, I, again, when you when you watch this and you see it and you hear it, you're going to know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. It, There's but, not any other way to really describe it because it's not wrong, but it's, it's wrong. The <laughs> only yeah. thing I can think of is why maybe they did that would be... Uh, Maybe there was too much background. Like, if they actually shot in Harlem or, like, a big neighborhood uh, like that, maybe. there could have been, like, a lot of background noise, and they maybe did need to do that. I, maybe. I don't maybe. know. I, again, we don't know. We don't know the behind the scenes. We don't know the backstory of some of this stuff, but maybe that was the case. I'm just saying, for in this, for those points where it happens, it's noticeable enough to the point where I'm like, um, what happened there? Yeah. I love the the point when he uh, is still on the run and he walks into the store and he stops that robbery from happening. Yes. And, and those guys are just starstruck. They're like, no. it's you. And it's like, no, it's, it's you, dude. Method man. Oh, my God. Yeah, and he identifies <laughs> with the guy's style. And it's like, you know what? Yes. Luke Cage identifies with people uh, just all around everyday people. He identified with a guy on a personal level and was like, you know what? They connected. Your double X. He made a rap. Yeah, I, I did he like how the jacket in. He yeah. made a rap about him. I like how the whole neighborhood really did start to support him by wearing the hoodies with holes. Right. That was that was kind of what I was home. wanting more of was this kind of push from uh, the Harlem street side and the political machinations of the cousin trying to come down on Luke Cage and everybody else standing up against her. Yeah, and that's, that's why like, like her political like career Luke. falls apart. And she's like, no, he's a menace. And they're like, no, this man is a hero. You're he protects nice. us when you're not. You're trying to shove a whole bunch of crap down our throats about things being awful. Yeah. We're, we all lost the time? We're, we're at 44. Uh, okay. 
Well, we'll, we'll wrap this up. But yeah, I I like that it didn't get really political. Uh, when it does, I like that it's shown that the bad guy is manipulating and fear-mongering the climate, much in how the media does. Let's be honest. The yeah. media likes to fear-monger and uh, play a scenario to whip up controversy so people watch their network. Controversy! Yeah, but I like that that was uh, essentially what happened, and it goes behind the scenes for that, and it shows why this is happening, and it's somebody who's trying to fear-monger and profiteer off that. Yeah. Uh, just overall, it's a good show, and it I is think everybody should watch it. A couple of things kind of irked us. Some of the some of the line reads got a little weird. Weirdly enough, just from Luke Cage. Uh, I thought Diamondback was the perfect amount of crazy for this. Yes. <laughs> Again, I would have loved to have seen more of him, and probably will in season two. But I think he could have been a stronger season two villain. Seen more dealings with uh, Cottonmouth. More dealings with Cottonmouth. There was just some. He was engaging as yeah. a bad guy, and it's like, God, you're. I just, just didn't like the way he balance. talked sometimes. Trudy, any final thoughts? That that was my final thought. Yeah. I didn't like the way Cottonmouth talked. Sometimes. How do you mean? Like sometimes when he spoke, his tongue was literally sticking out of his mouth. Right. And it made well, me not want to look at some him. People's, that's some people's cadence. Which, again, I kind of like the duet. The crossroads that Luke Cage and Cottonmouth are in this. They're basically the exact same person except one of them looks to seeing Harlem being, like the rest of the world, a strong, powerful, productive part of society. Whereas the other one sees it as being a constant slum for somebody to take power of and control. He he constantly thought that someone needed to be the king of Harlem. Right, versus Luke Cage who saw everybody and else. And in a way, Diamondback tried to take it in the same way. Yeah. Diamondback, Diamondback was just this crazy take over the world kind of guy. Yeah, Diamondback was definitely a pocket of crazy. Like, he's... Yeah. Really, you know, if I wanted to be really, really racist about this, I would say it, would have, it should have gone to Raul Julia in blackface. <laughs> no. Uh, well, I, oh, come on. M. Bison in that role? <laughs> yeah. It would have been pretty good. <laughs> what do you want to do, Diamondback? Take over the world? Of course! <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I'm gonna get letters on this one. <laughs> I guess that's about it, man. Uh, I think we've pretty much got over the the basic idea of the story and everything, so... Yeah, it's it's a fun hero story. If, you, if you're in the mood for something... I would Anyone? almost say Captain America-esque in how, yeah. how good a moral hero Luke Cage is. Yeah. If you enjoy the Captain America movies, like one and three, you're going to get a good kick out of Luke Cage. He stands up for his beliefs and he helps his friends. And he's that normal guy who's going to save the world. He's the average guy. He doesn't see himself well, anything hard. bigger than what he is. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll be back next week for episode three of S.H.I.E.L.D. Here's open. Oh, that's...